All right. Real quick, so on the agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about um, this really cool um, AWS pen testing tool that, that we found earlier in the year and we've been using to, to do a lot of purple teaming with. Um, so I'll give a little bit of background and context on it, the uh, preparation and execution, so downloading the binary, how you can kind of prepare it in a good test environment uh, before you start executing it and, and start conducting your purple team exercises. Uh, some of the doc detection and documentation regarding it. And at the very end, we'll talk about lessons learned as we work through some of the purple team exercises using this tool. Yeah, and um, uh, the documentation tool that we use is one that Luciano found from a SANS course, course. that he was yeah. taking yeah. called Vector, V-E-C-T-R. Um, and it's really cool because it maps the whole attack chain of the techniques that you input that you're going to be measuring during your purple team exercise. Yeah. Um, so our team, uh, Luciano, me uh, and Zach, who's our friend back in Minnesota, uh, we started this journey in January. January, February. Um, and we went from doing a purple team exercise about once a month that Luciano would design. He would develop a kill, uh, an attack chain, right? And he would develop, you know, put something into Caldera. We would run it on all our agents, but that took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And our company is a very cloud forward company. So doing all of this work on you know, Windows endpoints is interesting, but not so helpful for our business. So Luciano found Stratus Red Team yep. through his connections at Datadog. I'm gonna give credit to our CISO, JD Hansen actually. Oh yeah, that's reached right. Reached out earlier in the year and said, hey, have you checked out this tool for cloud pen testing called Stratus uh, from Datadog? Just heard of it, um, looked right into it. Christoph, which I'll talk about a little bit right now, uh, had just put out a blog article earlier this year regarding that tool. Uh, once I started looking into it, I was like, well, this seems pretty easy to you know, kind of download and execute, deploy, and, and kind of get started with it. So we got together, we huddled, and we say, hey, let's give this a try. Sure enough, uh, we got started within a week or two of, of doing uh, some of the preliminary research on it. Yeah, and then we started doing one a week instead yep. of one a month, which is a huge acceleration. Huge acceleration, yep. Uh, so just some background and context, right? So I, I didn't throw some modeling attacker behavior on here mainly because there's just a plethora of, of, of resources out there that kind of talk a, a little bit about the kill chain. Uh, not so much in the cloud, but you know, just the uh, more of the, the historical or traditional kill chain. Uh, threat intel and, and detecting ILCs, we'll talk about how you can collect a lot of the results from these exercises to start building your, your catalog of ILCs. Talk a little bit about purple teaming actually once we get into uh, right before the, the demo. And then uh, I'll, I'll mention a little bit of the complexities in the cloud. Which if you watched Nick's talk yesterday on AWS security, it demonstrates just how complex and how many toggles there are that folks might choose without realizing the consequences of that choice, particularly those wild cards. Yes, and you know what? To give credit to Michael Lang, too, who just gave a talk on serverless C2, uh, there, you, you will notice that there is a little bit of overlap with uh, some of the, the, the concepts that he mentions in his talk as well, too. So I thought that was great, and I was you know, super excited about his talk as well, too. Yeah, so you watching the recording, go watch those, too. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, so complexities in the cloud, right? So right now, most, if not all, cloud providers have over 200 services, right? You're talking about uh, storage, uh, computing, uh, networking, right? And, and all of the above after that. So it makes it a, a bit more complex and challenging trying to figure out, you know, what the sort of the attack patterns are, the, the attack landscape is for, for a lot of the, um, um, you know, threat, threat actors that are out there. Uh, once we started playing with with uh, Stratus, we found that it's it's much easier to get insight into what what attacker behavior looks like in in the cloud. Um, another complexity or challenge is uh, the emerging threat landscape, right? Just uh, again to credit Mike Lang's uh, talk, he's talking about serverless C two, right, which is a is a pretty fairly new concept. Um, so you kind of have to keep up with that, kind of keep up with the threat actors and a lot of the activities and events that are going out there. Not to mention the fact that, you know, cloud technologies are kind of new to all of us, right? And so we're trying to yep. secure and learn, build the airplane as we go. Excellent, great point. And like, just like I mentioned, different cloud providers, you know, offer different requirements, different services. So it's kind of uh, hard to kind of, you know, dedicate the time to understand a lot of those services from uh, AWS IAM, for example, is, is a, the identity and access management that you kind of have to understand. So put, put some time into it and into understanding how that works. 
And then of course, security controls can be very challenging as well too. Um, how do you secure these services? How do you, uh, using best practices, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Find a good document documentation on, on best practices for securing your cloud and, and kind of go through that. So the tool that we'll, we'll be talking about will kind of help you along the way with that. So again, ultimately, this is another great resource for red teams, blue teams, purple teams together to kind of use to improve their security posture. Yeah, and if you saw the talk yesterday or if you watched the recording on blue cloud, purple cloud, um, which was by Jason, oh, I can't remember his last name, I'm sorry, Jason. Um, that is going to work very well if you're an Azure heavy Windows focused environment. But we, like I said, we're a cloud forward company and we have pretty much all Mac endpoints and we run our product on Linux servers in the cloud and microservices and containers, right? So for us, blue and purple cloud, we can't just install and use, but Stratus Red Team, if you have an environment that sounds like ours, this is definitely something you want to consider. Absolutely. Uh, so real quick, preparation and execution. Uh, so obviously taking a new tool, getting it approved through, through your procurement chain and, and your leadership can take some time, especially if you don't understand how the tool works, you have to spend some time on you know, learning it, uh, teaching it to others as well too, so they also understand uh, you know, the basic principles of the tool. They may require a lot of dependencies to deploy software or hardware dependencies as well too. They may require support, uh, maintenance, patching, et cetera, right? And especially if it's a commercial tool, it's obviously gonna require a lot of that um, of, you know, finesse and handholding as well too. Uh, and then it can become a, a roadblock, in, in especially in lean security teams. When you have two to three security members in a team, um, it, it can be very difficult to have to then teach them and have somebody else kind of take over some of the duties, especially with one employee is not there. Um, and so again, Stratus kind of solves a lot of these challenges, right? Because there's not much to it. It's open source. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it. It's open source. You download it and you can just start playing with it right away. Mm -hmm. So here it is, Stratus Red Team. It was uh, originally developed by Christoph to find uh, the Reaper, who's uh, an employee at Datadog. He's a cloud security researcher. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Christoph earlier this year at DEF CON and had a really good chat. And actually I had, I presented him with the idea that like, hey, I want to do a, a talk on, on your tool. And he was super excited. So he kind of coached me through the uh, process and, and I learned a lot from him as well too. We just kind of kept tweeting each other uh, um, as, as we went. It's written in Go. Uh, so it's already an executable binary, but he also has the source code up in GitHub and I have a link to it on, on the uh, slide, but I can also provide that a little bit later. And uh, it currently contains, so think of it as a good um, atomic red team framework, but for cloud, right? So a lot of the attack techniques that are already provided in Stratus are for AWS, Azure, Kubernetes, and GC, uh, GCP. The yeah, Google cloud. GCP presence is growing yep. like by the day. There. Beauty of open source, eh? So you automatically use it, download it, do a list of all of the attack techniques that are available, and you'll see all the ones that are associated with each one of those uh, cloud providers. And like I mentioned, it's a very similar concept to Atomic Red Team, uh, which people have already been talking about and, and are kind of familiar with. And the, it also maps to the MITRE attack tactic. So that, that's great. So if you have some kind of catalog that you're already using for your attack techniques that, and you're using MITRE, the MITRE framework to kind of um, um, you know, match those, it, it, it already does that. So that, that's great. And it's execute it via CLI. So there's no fancy GUI that you need to you know, download and you know, install extra resources that you got to take up. It's all via command line using your terminal. So I just kind of threw a, a slide in here on, on just how simple it is for the installation. So the quickest method to get started with this is you just pull down the, the pre-built binary that's already available on GitHub, right? So you download it for your operating system. On, on Mac OS, if you're using a Mac OS endpoint, you can use a brew uh, package installer to, to just download and, and get all the dependencies already. And there's not many dependencies that it requires. And there's also a Docker image if you wanna go that route too. Uh, I do mention the one third party dependency, and this one's pretty important because it's actually um, crucial to the, just the, the execution of Stratus and that's HashiCorp Terraform, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and as we'll get into it right now, when, once I get into the under the hood, it basically uses, uh, Terraform to do the, the instrumentation for the pre, the pre setup or the, what Stratus calls a warm up infrastructure. And we'll get more into it right now. So here's some important concepts that I wanna go over. 
before getting into stratus. So there's one, two, three, there's four main uh, concepts. So you have the, the warm up concept, and that's where stratus will use Terraform to spin up your prereq infrastructure. And what that means is that if you, and this is ideally you wanna, you wanna use a, a, a development uh, environment in AWS or whatever cloud provider you're using to be able to kind of do a lot of these uh, attack techniques or tests. Warmup will build the required infrastructure for you, but it won't actually attack it quite yet. It'll just kind of put it in a, in a, in a state where you have the infrastructure built for it. Great opportunity to pivot to the GUI, check out what permissions it used and applied, That's, see what its naming conventions are. Yes. Like if you're learning AWS, that was something that I found is I didn't know cloud infrastructure super well before this and Stratus helped me as a analyst and now engineer get more proficient in AWS so I can bet. And if you know the thing, you can secure the thing. Very good point. So uh, Christoph also started the uh, documentation for it and it's, it's well documented. That's another good point that I wanted to you know, mention as mm -hmm. well. So thank you, Laura, for that. Uh, so once you do a warm up, the next step is to detonate. Detonate will actually execute the attack technique. Revert will put the infrastructure back as it was uh, prior to the detonation. And then cleanup will remove all of those resources that the, the warm up stage con conducted. So to, just to give you a good example, and so that it makes sense, is if you are going to attack an S3 bucket, that S3 bucket doesn't have to exist because it's not on, on your operational or, or production environment, right? We're talking strictly in a, in a test development environment. That's exactly where you want to conduct a lot of these tests so you're not messing with your production environment. Uh, when you warm up and you're going to do a, an, an attack against an S3 bucket, uh, Stratus will create that S3 bucket first in the warm up stage. It will then detonate it and say the attack technique is to exfil that S3 bucket and make it public. That's the attack. The revert will take that back and put the S3 bucket as it was. So if it, if it applied any uh, permissions in there, make it like read world read or something like that it'll then revert it back to the way it was and then clean up just completely destroys that entire infrastructure clean it up and you don't have to worry about any extra resources that you know that you, you may have to pay for uh one thing i also wanted to mention is that for the purpose of this talk we will be talking strictly aws so yeah our cloud platform of somebody else's choice but yeah. we're along for the ride and here's a quick um sort of authentication uh, scheme for it too. So that's the other thing that you need. So again, it's, it's good to have a testing environment in AWS to test uh, the tool. One thing also I wanna mention is that it will be good to run through these, through these attack techniques using a read only credential and a read write credential, just so that you can um, uh, capture what the activity looks like in both types of permissions or both types of roles. Mm -hmm. Uh, here, so here real quick, uh, once I authenticate it to AWS, I can do a list of attack techniques with the simple command of list, right? So you execute the Stratus binary, you run list right next to it. It'll print out a nice list of all the attack techniques that are available. You pick the one that you want and then you uh, you detonate it. You can either detonate it or warm up. Like I mentioned, the warm up will only stand up the pre-rec infrastructure. It won't actually detonate the attack technique. If you give it the detonate before you warm up, it'll run through the entire process where it warms up, it'll create the prereq infrastructure and it will attack, it, it will execute the attack technique. Okay, under the hood. So like I mentioned, Terraform is needed. If you already have Terraform in your environment, that's okay. When you actually execute Stratus for the very first time, it will pull the Terraform binary from uh, HashiCorp. So it won't mess with your uh, the, the Terraform that you already may have installed in your binary mm -hmm. or in your environment, sorry. So that's a good thing uh, that it kind of just isolates uh, the, the, the whole in Stratus environment to a more, uh, you know, use for, for testing. So you're not messing with anything that's production or anything that's already existing in your environment. So your, your Terraform main TI file, that's where it'll have all the instrumentation uh, logic for creating the, the infrastructure, the prereq infrastructure. Like I mentioned, I, I mentioned S3, an S3 bucket, for example. That's where it can have all of the instructions for creating it, the, the roles that it'll apply to that S3 bucket, and then create the prereq infrastructure. So it makes it super easy. One question that I got at B-Sides now, now that I'm talking about it was, um, 
could Stratus be used to model your current AWS production infrastructure, right? And I thought about like, well, it's not really intended to do that. The, the idea behind Stratus is to um, run these attack techniques and understand what that activity looks like so that you can build a, you know, a detection alert or you know, alerts. But that was, I thought that was a good question. Well, how could you really understand it if it's, if it's not really attacking your production environment? You wanna be able to, you know, if an attacker you know, uh, breaches your, or compromises your environment, you'll wanna be able to you know, uh, look at what that activity looks like. So I thought about it. Well, the main, you know, the Terraform file is available once you have it and you can obviously modify it, modify it to, to be able to uh, model your production environment. So um, I didn't really answer him there until I actually took a step back and I said, well, this is, a, this is all configurable and it's editable. So you basically could just uh, use it to model your, your environment. So that's, when, that's why I mentioned it here. So it's, it's, it's as simple as going into the main Terraform file and, and making any, any changes that you want there, rerunning that Terraform file so that it creates a, a, the prerequisite infrastructure that matches your environment. And I thought that would be a great way. It, yeah, it would take some time. At some point, you could probably, you know, make the changes. It's all open source too, right? So make the yeah. changes in the actual code, and you know, you have uh, your own version of Stratus. You know, we actually ran into this. Um, we were doing our weekly TTP exercise, and then all of our techniques in our regression test, because you know, you run through them, make sure that you're still triggering all of your alerts, right? They all failed with weird errors, like 401 oh. errors. Suddenly, there were no authorization to do things, and we we're yes. like, what the heck? What changed? Yes. We learned after the fact that other folks in our security team were testing out tagging requirements. Resource tagging, yep. And we didn't have any resource tagging in the Terraform files in Stratus because it was all, you know, just the open source yes. version. But as soon as we went and just manually modified the files in each of our locals, then boom, all of a sudden our regress regression tests were yes. again. Um, and, you know, I think this is actually, this is a side note. Thank you for letting me take a momentary tangent. Uh, the blue purple cloud tool that Jason created generates Terraform files. So for me, uh, a next step is command line entry or a command line toggles for making changes and then generating that Terraform file rather than prescribing it. Yep. So again, so highly open source community, let's go. Yes, that's what. That's what's great about it, right? You can just kind of modify it as you see fit. But you wouldn't know these things until you actually start playing with it and you run, <laughs> and you run into these challenges. Uh, so, okay, so here I have a, the detonation. I have a, a, a quick um, walkthrough and then we'll do, at the very end, we'll do a demo so you can kind of see how Laura and I uh, purple team one of these attack techniques. Once you run the detonate command uh, from your attacker terminal, you can have your blue team kind of take a look at the cloud trail and for that attack technique and look at what that activity looks like. In this case, I ran um, uh, a credential access te uh, attack technique to get EC2 password data. This is specifically for like a Windows EC2. Uh, so once I ran the attack technique, I can go take a look at CloudTrail. Um, what, what the author did is kind of tag a lot of the metadata in Stratus to kind of have that Stratus signature um, for the user agent, you'll see a Stratus and a UUID to kind of, you know, let the uh, analyst know that, oh, this is from Stratus, it's not actually coming from legitimate um, or normal traffic. So it's easier for you to find it. Once you go to the cloud trail, you can start kind of, you know, digging in there and looking for anything that's Stratus and you'll see, you know, the activity and the events and help you match it to the, the, attacker, uh, the attacker technique or the attack technique. Okay, so we briefly mentioned vector. When we started, when we started the exercise, we stood up an Excel spreadsheet, and that's how we started logging a, a lot of these exercises. Quickly, we found out <laughs> after like week four or five that uh, Excel spreadsheets were not going to work. Right? Way um, too unwieldy. We were grabbing, we we're copying and pasting a lot of uh, a lot of the output, and you know, trying to make sense of it. We had. By, you know, by week five or something like that, we had something like 15 columns, right? From the attack technique to the date that we executed, just trying to keep, you know, all the information organized. And um, that didn't even map to MITRE. Right. That didn't right. give us kill chain. Right. It, it, was, it was a very <laughs> dumb spreadsheet. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, it, it complicated. It wasn't very organized. Uh, but then I remembered Vector, right? I, I, did, I did hear from Vector from one of my science courses. Um, 
And I think uh, the atomic red team talk as well too mentioned back there as well too. So we'll go a little bit deeper into it. So Vector is a really good tool, free by the way, uh, by the, the security risk advisors put it out there. It's free. I don't think it's open source, but it is free to the community. You download it. There's also a a Docker image for it. Um, very easy to deploy. It's, it has a web-based uh, GUI. It has, you know, has a database, so you're able to capture all of your documentation and uh, ultimately build reports from it, right? So if your leadership wants to know how you're doing in, in these campaigns and these exercises, you know, it's just a simple report that you know I'll, I'll kind of mention a little bit later. It also has an API, so talk yeah. about automation, my yeah. friends. Automated Stratus red team regression test that automatically sends you a report with the results based on vector, you know, that's yes. a dream of the future. So very high level, uh, you have your assessment group, which is the, uh, the name of the test that you're conducting. You have a campaign under there where you can have a group of tests associated with that campaign. And then you have individual test cases. Each individual te test case can map to a Stratus attack technique. So super simple to, to kind of, you know, un understand. All right. So I mentioned a little bit of installation just because, again, this is another tool that was really simple to, uh, to deploy and get running right off the bat, right? Um, didn't require much, much resources. We already had like an AWS testing environment, so I was able to get this going within like hours. Built-in support for multi-factor authentication. Yep. If not SSO, at least you can have MFA. Yep. And like Laura mentioned, it has a Graf GraphQL API too, if you want to you know, uh, do some programmatic processing as well too. And this, uh, this tool is also well-documented. I mentioned, I mentioned Stratus was well-documented by Christoph. This one's also very well-documented. Okay, so I mentioned that. I meant, talked about Stratus, talked about Vector. Now we can purple team it. You want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. We did plan for Luciano to talk for 20 minutes straight, I promise. Uh, that was intentional because Luciano did set up all of our infrastructure for us, right? This was our red teamer doing the thing, right? And I've heard this a lot throughout the purple team talks mm -hmm. is about educating the blue team, which I very much appreciate because I got a lot to learn. But what we learned during purple teaming is that it's a two-way street, right? Mm -hmm. Because Luciano learned a lot from us about the way that detection yeah. happens inside our organization, the way that we hunt, which helps him hide when we do our blind tests. Yeah. So, I um, caught many times too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So, the first couple of times that we ran our TTPs, you know, using a Caldera agent and designing in that sort of like yeah. month long model, which we actually thought was a pretty great acceleration of the usual six month pen testing engagement. Yeah. Um, it, we had some communication challenges up front, yeah. right? So it was like, it was unclear when the things were gonna go down, like Luciano would run them solo and then the blue team would like try to figure out what was happening in response. And we were like, are we supposed to go into this blind and not really know what's happening? We were like, that's not very purple of us. This feels just like a red team exercise, right? Yeah. Um, so important things about purple team is have a pre-brief discussion and set expectations with each other about when, yeah. who's gonna be in the room? Are we gonna do this synchronously, asynchronously? you know, what information can we share? I think it's really important for all of us to be on board and aware of what we're looking for. That's the point of Purple Team is that we work together, not separately and then come together at the yeah. end. Um, decide the scope and the rules of engagement, right? That's all, all here. Um, and then of course, you have to have a lessons learned afterward. And the beauty of Stratus and Vector was that in the space of an hour, we were able to run attack techniques and multiple yep. roles within our environment to test against what was actually happening in production. Not only that, we were able to pivot and learn from those results, generate high value detections, do a threat hunt into our background and say, how frequently does this happen in our environment? Is this something that is you know, good for us to alert on or is this just more alert noise and fatigue? Um, so all of this that you see within Purple Team It, Used to take us a month, and now it you takes a takes us an hour. It's about an hour. So about an hour. Huge improvement to our purple team program. Uh, I mean, the, obviously the coming the communication got much clearer. We were all on the same page. We were able to understand what was happening, right, rather than kind of being just blinded or siloed off. And it's because we did it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and we learned. Right. What's the next slide? Yeah. Okay. So detection and documentation. Um, I think this is going to talk us through how to actually build 
a purple team yeah, exercise, the, right? right? So this is building the campaign. This is the overall campaign. This could be, you know, purple teaming at SANS Hacking Fest 2022, or it could be, you know, Stratus red team regression test of March, whatever it is. So you create that, build all of your test cases. Now I wanted to call out this interface. Um, notice how it has a red side and a blue side. Vector is intended that your red team and your blue team are both equally responsible for documenting the things that they're doing. So in here in the red team for operator guidance, we would demonstrate exactly the command that you have to submit at the command line to run the attack, right? You have everything that you need. When Luciano would run it, he would hit play. When it would be done, he would hit stop. So we knew how long the attack would take. On the other side, then we could track whether or not alerts were generated, whether or not we were able to respond to that thing, right? Because yeah. without an alert triggering, you can't respond to a thing. Um, and then it was all just documented here in the tool so that we could go back and reference Absolutely. it later and see, ah, it didn't get detected this first time, but the next time during a regression test, it did. Um, and you can just copy paste campaigns. That was yep. my favorite part was Excellent. it made it really easy. You can copy paste each of these test cases in between campaigns. So if you have a campaign that's best like specific to one technique, well, you can copy that case to your regression test campaign as well. You know, yes. create once, publish everywhere. A quick shout out to Vector as well too. Um, it's fully customizable. So a lot of the, the tools that are already in there by default, uh, you can obviously add your own. So if you have your own EDRs, your own SOARs, your own SEAMs, your own uh, uh, red tools as well too, uh, you can just add them in there as part mm -hmm. of the documentation. That's one of the things that I, I really li liked about it is that it's fully customizable. Yeah, although they did have a really vast list. I was really impressed at their coverage of security tools just built in by default. Cool. So, so here's the, yeah. I'll take it. So red, the red can start the test case, right? That's when I, mm -hmm. I would typically say, hey, all right, we're going to run, um, you know, Stratus technique uh, eight, right? And I'll go into the red, into the red uh, um, panel, insert the, the attack technique and start logging all my information, the, how I ran, uh, what the command line was for running that attack technique, what the output was. I'll, I'll capture all that information there. That way they can also see it. Um, one for this example, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about it too. We did one for defense evasion, which was changing the uh, cloud trail cloud trail lifecycle rule, right? So uh, what this does is, if you have a, a certain uh, cloud trail rule to um, rotate your log, this one will set it to one day, so it'll it'll only capture uh, events for one day. And I'll talk a little bit more about it. And if you're not collecting logs to a central log aggregator, but like some companies yeah. we know, that's pretty problematic. Then, uh, we, so we can, again, switch back and forth between red and blue uh, and, and document what I'm seeing versus what the blue team is also seeing when they start analyzing logs. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another cool feature about it. So once you start actually adding more test, test cases or tech techniques in this case, uh, it'll start kind of mapping out what that looks like mm -hmm. um, and gives you a nice little graph that you can print out or, you know, export to a PNG and add it to other, you know, documentation uh, resources that you may have, but you can obviously just leave it here as well. This graph gets really cool when you build all of your test cases yeah. out for your regression tests, yeah. because you get to see all of the different places in the techniques and tactics, right? Mm -hmm. And map it out and see all of the places that you are strongly testing and the places that you don't have much coverage so that you can increase your technique usage in those areas where you're lacking. Visualization, my favorite. Great. And then at the very end, once you get done with that campaign, you can uh, you know, create a nice little report and it'll have graphs and pie charts in there. This one doesn't look very, very useful really because I, I ran three test cases. I, uh, and one, I only marked one as being, um, or not, not detected, none of them were detected really. So, but once you actually start having a little bit more, more diversity in there, it'll, it'll start making sense. The, uh, the metrics up there on the top left, you can also change it so it can look like a burn down chart or just other different types of graphs as well too. So not just the pie chart, but you know, bar graph as well. So. I'm Plenty not a statistic of... statistician, right? I'm a security engineer. So yeah. thank you, Vector. <laughs> All right, and here's our demo time. So this is something that Laura and I recorded prior to the conference. Uh, hopefully hopefully it plays. Um, you know what? Maybe we just skip it.
We can post this slide deck uh, and link to the YouTube video after the fact. We can give it to Sans and they can share it. Um, oh, we can walk through. You're going to miss me dancing, though, which is <laughs> like maybe the best so, part of the whole demo. So we, we picked this one because uh, it, it's actually uh, pretty relatable, uh, especially if you're in an AWS environment. So a few years ago, uh, Ubiquity Networks had a pretty major breach. It's actually caused by extortion by one of its own employees. Uh, it's very well documented, the, uh, the indictment the, uh, and uh, scriptures actually posted online and, and served as a, a really good inspiration for this particular tech technique. But it all anyways. put us in the mood for purple teaming, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, essentially, what the employee did was act as if though they were a threat actor, an external threat actor, and try to get Ubiquity to pay money to them. Uh, and somewhere along the, the way, they, they kind of screwed up. Uh, but one of the attack techniques that they did, because they had admin privileges on their AWS environment was do something like we mentioned in the lifecycle rule. Uh, they, mm -hmm. to, in order to clear their, their logs or their tracks or cover their tracks, they modified the lifecycle rule to um, expire after one day. And no, obviously nobody was able to detect that because you know, he had uh, more insight into that, into, that, um, into that rule than anyone else at the organization did. And because they were an insider, they knew that those logs weren't going anywhere else. Yeah. And so that was a great way to cover their tracks. Yeah. So this is a super really good, you know, cool scenario too. I mean, obviously using this one in particular can help you get started uh, mm -hmm. using it as well. So, okay. Um, in the video too, eventually when it comes out, I show the Stratus documentation um, because it literally spells out everything that this means, right? So if you're new to AWS and you're thinking, well, how do I know what techniques are actually going to be valuable to me? Go read the docs for real. Yeah. RTFD, read the stinking docs. Um, they're really good. They tell you the like event to look for in your logs. So no matter what sim you're in, it's like literally just a string search away yep. from finding these events. And as Luciano stated earlier, they all have some level of stratus in the thing that is spun up. So if it's an S3 bucket, it'll be S, you know, Stratus dash random string. So super easy to find by way of support of the documentation. So you know what you're looking at and the implications and also how to look for it. Yeah. Um, and we actually set up a cloud trail for the first time between the two of us. Yeah. Uh, this, was monitoring actually, yeah, management this was actually logs. outside of our organization's AWS environment, yeah. right? We were like, hey, just, just do this in, a, in our own. And, you know, obviously that was a lot of great stuff that we got from there as well, too. I highly recommend doing that. You know, I walked into an environment that was already set up for me. And then once I was setting up my own, I was like, oh, this all makes so much more yeah, sense. Makes more sense. Yeah. Um, so lessons learned. Okay. Purple so, team. <laughs> congratulations Check. at this point. Yeah, We've done it. You, did, you ran your exercise. Um, now it's debrief time, right? How did it go? Did, uh, did you have enough visibility? Were there any missing log sources? That, that's mm -hmm. a good one. We ran a few where we haven't seen any activity, right? So we start asking, like, well, where is this stuff getting logged? And where why aren't it going? we ingesting why it? Why aren't we ingesting it? Exactly. So uh, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, and this is something interesting that we ran into along the way. Another sort of quirk is you have to consider what permissions you are running your Stratus team because you have to authenticate to an AWS account. And if it doesn't have sufficient permissions to set up AWS resources, you're not going to be successful in warming up, much less detonating techniques. So for a while, I don't know where we got this idea in our head, but we were warming up in read only and then detonating in read only, yes. thinking that we were testing read only. No, it didn't spin up the infrastructure. So we weren't actually detonating anything, yes. right? It's important to learn from our mistakes. Yep. So, you know, one of the strategies that we came away with was make sure you have a high privilege account that can actually generate all of these resources. Not so high privilege as like it doesn't need to be admin for the whole AWS account, but it should be able to create S3 buckets, maybe create IAM roles, and maybe you want to test a role in your environment. So assume that role and confirm that you can't do those things. That's just as important were the techniques that we found that we couldn't do. And we were like, great, we don't want this account to be able to do that that's why i mentioned earlier it's a, it's a good idea to run them both using you know low privilege low privileges and high privileges that way you understand what that activity looks like yeah yeah and uh, we've been you know this is a, a red team purple team conference right but we've heard over and over like detection engineering is one of the most important things that we can do right now and for me as a detection engineer it's difficult to detect things that i can't 
see or hear or comprehend just because I haven't been exposed to them. Importantly for me, I actually got to see all of this activity happening in my logs, which meant I, you know, and again, we've talked about the threat hunts, the fact that we were able to go back in time and say, does this happen in our environment? Is this usual? Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't, for example, the um, EC2 Windows example um, that was in our screenshots Screen before, we don't run any Windows EC2 instances. Mm -hmm. And it is a very specific AWS uh, event that is called. And so if that ever happens in our environment, it's yeah, a problem, something right? Yep, yep. And it triggered once. So that point- And we were like, what? So, you know, it works. Your detections are suddenly actually actionable. To Laura's point, that's when we start asking, like, so what do we do with all these findings? Yeah. Right. And one yeah. of the things that comes up, one of the, actually one of the very first questions that we ask is like, well, how about we baseline it? What's normal behavior versus uh, malicious, potentially malicious behavior, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that's what you start doing with this data. Yeah. Right. Look at your environment what, and you start kind of uh, differentiating what normal activity looks like uh, you know, from, from malicious behavior. Uh, can valuable detections kind of be generated from these findings? Right, so that's one of the things that we start looking at. Yeah. Um, well, this benefit from a retroactive threat hunt. That's something super awesome that came out of uh, running this, these exercises as well. Yeah. Not only not only would we look at potentially historical behavior or historical activity, um, but we would look for very specific historical activity. Mm -hmm. Has this happened in the past? Mm -hmm. And how often, right? Because it may be and that maybe it's happening too often. Yeah. Then. Exactly. We talk about changes to business or development processes yes. because why is everybody in the organization being given admin access by way of our AWS right. accounts? You know, if that were to happen, then you would see it and you could actually have a conversation with the business unit and add value yep. and increase security so, posture along the way. From a lot, from the result from a lot of these exercises, actually ended up having be, becoming conversations with others in the organization, right? Because mm -hmm. we didn't know, we didn't know whether this was normal whether it wasn't normal. So, you know, we start asking these questions and yeah. um, we let, we end up learning a lot, right? Yeah, and we made a lot of friends along the way. <laughs> it's important to have friends. Yeah. That's it, okay. Or for conclusion. Yeah, conclusion. Sure. So you can read these bullet points. I wanna hear from you all, what's your questions?